Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Robert sent me a note, and I'd seen the story, but it's a strange one. Airbnb told some snowboarders that a $186 a night rental was not obligated to provide them with hot water during their snowy break, forcing them to take icy showers. This was happening in Lake Tahoe, uh, and this is the question. If you rent a place through Airbnb, what must they provide you? And how much of this is stuff that you have to double check, such as the availability of hot water? So James Gordon wrote this for Daily Mail. group of snowboarders were horrified to learn there was no hot water at their snowy Lake Tahoe rental. And even more outraged when Airbnb told them the owner was under no obligation to provide it. Hot water is just like an option or something. The man at the center of the story traveled from Alameda in Northern California to the wintry getaway in the Sierra Nevada uh, to spend some time skiing and snowboarding in the mountains. The group believed they'd found a bargain with a three-bedroom, three-bathroom property priced at 186 bucks a night. Uh, what they didn't notice was how the listing did not mention the presence of any hot water. Now, it being winter... Airbnb sided with the hosts. We do allow hosts to self-select hot water as an amenity. This is meant to be used for remote off-the-grid listings so that guests can plan properly. And that's apparently in the terms and conditions, if you read them. After a day on the slopes, the vacationers look forward to a steamy shower to warm up, only to find out that there was no more hot water. Now, there had been warm water on the first day. But by the second and third days, it had completely run out, which makes me wonder what kind of water heater they've got and how much volume it contains. And do they share it with other buildings or something? Or what's going on there? Because of that, we had no hot water at the Airbnb, and we reached out to the host, the man said. We just let them know there was an issue with the hot water and that we were taking cold showers, which wasn't great in the cold Tahoe weather, of course. When we heard back from the Airbnb customer service, we were quite surprised by the response. They had mentioned that because hot water wasn't specifically included as an amenity at the Airbnb that we were staying at, the host was under no obligation to provide it. Airbnb's response initially sided with the owner of the property in the listing, but then they came around. And it did say that there was no hot water listed as an amenity, but there was a hot tub. Now, whether the hot tub functions as a time machine, we don't know. (laughs) But the group did receive a partial refund for their stay. An Airbnb spokesperson told the TV station, for this particular case, our team did follow up with the host to inquire about an amenity issue that may need to be addressed. Following the complaint, Airbnb refunded a service fee and cleaning fee, which was roughly the equivalent of one night's stay. The owner of the rental property also issued a refund for a portion of the stay as well. Now, here's the thing. You might say, well, Steve, it you know doesn't say that they got hot water, then they have no right to expect hot water. Uh, that might be true uh, on some levels, but there's another concept that happens here, and I think you should be aware of it. And they talk about the warranty of habitability. The warranty of habitability. I talk about warranties all the time on this show. They're usually things that apply to goods that are sold to you, and the seller makes some kind of promise that the goods are merchantable or you know, if something happens in three years or 36,000 miles, they'll repair the defect, whatever it might be. But when a landlord, and I'm talking about landlord-tenant situations, generally speaking first, just to get the idea out there. If you go rent an apartment from somebody, you're the tenant and the person you're renting from is the landlord. The landlord has to provide you habitable premises. That is that what they rent you can be lived in. So if you see an apartment complex and there's a manager's office, and uh, you go in there and you talk to them, and uh, they say, oh, yeah, we got a whole bunch of units available. What do you want? One bedroom, two bedroom. And you two or a couple of them, you go, hey, it's okay. I'll take one of your uh, two bedrooms. You say, okay. And they sign you up, and they sign you up for what you didn't look at, for whatever reason. And so you go to move in, and you open the door, and there's no roof. Literally, you're in a room without a roof. <laughs> Is that the sky up there? Whoa, what's that doing here? Um, did you specifically negotiate for a roof? Did you read the terms and conditions? <laughs> the warranty of habitability is that the place can be habitable. You can live there. 
And it's assumed that there's certain things they don't need to tell you that you will have, such as a roof. <laughs> I would guess hot water. Uh, I would guess in most places running water um, and so on. So if you were to rent a place, let's say you rented a house. Let's say you inspected the house to make sure it had a roof. Okay? You, you, you rent a house. And one day... You're walking through the living room. Let's assume that you're doing nothing wrong. You're simply walking through the living room. And you're a person of average weight. You're not grossly overweight. You are a person of average weight. As you walk across the living room, the floor gives way and you plunge into the basement because the floor was, was apparently built out of balsa wood. Uh, somebody had done a really fast job building the floor because of the last time it caved in and the previous tenants. And, and so you complain and go, hey, you call up the landlord, my, my living room floor just collapsed and, and now there's a big hole where you can see into the basement, which ironically means the basement is a room without a roof, but we won't go there. So the floor just caved in and the landlord says to you, oh, did I say in the lease anywhere that I guaranteed that that floor would survive your tenancy? <laughs> no, <laughs> didn't need to. That's part of the warranty of habitability. So now, when it gets to short-term rentals, okay, the laws with respect to that might be a little different. And also, it might depend on what state you're in, because some states are going to have different rules on this, and, and they may or may not be that strict. But can someone generally expect that they're going to stay someplace that has running water, and, it, and on occasion when called for, hot water? Now, I think most people would assume that to be true. But if this company, Airbnb, actually says, oh, if you want hot water, check to make sure it's an amenity. I mean, they can do that, but it seems to me they're setting themselves up for stories like this. Because somewhere along the line, someone's going to book something that's got no hot water, and many people don't want to stay someplace with no hot water. So they say that they did that originally for people who have Airbnb rentals that are like, you know, shack out in the woods, no electricity, no water. Does it have hot water? No, it doesn't have any water, okay? Th that makes sense to me, but I think they should do it backwards. They should be required to call it out if it's missing any of the obvious stuff. So, for instance, can all the windows be closed? Oh, oh no, they can't. It turns out there's a couple big windows that, that cannot be closed. Big open holes in the wall. So you go to check in, you notice there's this big window. Well, it's a window frame, there's no glass. What? Why is there no window in the front of the house? Oh, you, you didn't see? Uh, we never promised you a front window. So you can see why somebody might be upset by that. And if again, if it really is an amenity that you've got to double check to make sure it's got hot water, uh, I think you're doing it wrong. But, but Airbnb is a huge company. I've never used them as either end of that transaction. But, it seems to me that the things that most people assume they're going to get when they rent someplace should be there. And if they're not, you call out the fact that they're missing. Not, hey, you didn't check to see if we had it. Because then you got to start asking all kinds of stuff. Do the bathrooms have toilets? Did, 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 you, did you see anywhere in there where we promised you a toilet? <laughs> we, can get, we can get really stupid with this, you know. <laughs> so... There you go, but Airbnb gave them a refund, as did the host. And now my pro tip to you is if you're going to rent a place on Airbnb, you might need to double check to make sure that all of the amenities are there, especially if the amenities are something simple such as hot water, which you might have assumed you'd get, but Airbnb might say, no, no, you shouldn't assume that. So Robert, thanks for sending it. Uh, that's the cold shoulder from the Daily Mail written by James Gordon. Airbnb told snowboarders $186 a night rental wasn't obligated to provide them with hot water during snowy break, forcing them to take icy showers. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes.